بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear viewers Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to our program Building Faith in Allah During this program we've been discussing what is known as Iman the Arabic word for faith. And the main discussion has been about faith in Allah. There are six articles of faith that Muslims are required to believe in Islam. It is belief in Allah and belief in his messengers and belief in his books and the day of judgment and also the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are required to believe all of these things. We have been staying and focusing and sharing information about faith in Allah. Because this is a, of the utmost importance. Faith in Allah was established in Mecca by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his companions for 13 years establishing faith in Allah and prohibiting its opposite which is shirk or in English language paganism or polytheism and dear viewers to understand how to build our faith in Allah properly it is necessary to understand that faith in Allah means faith in the oneness of Allah, faith in the tawheed of Allah. However, <coughs> it isn't enough to understand tawheed without understanding its opposite. To understand something properly, you understand it, and you understand its opposite. And this is shirk. This must be understood for fear of falling into it and it corrupting a person's to hate. This is the case because someone who doesn't understand a thing is liable to indulge in it. As the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, يُشِكُوا أَنْ يُنْقَضْ عَرَ الْإِسْلَامِ عَوْرَةٍ عَوْرَةً إِذَا نَشَأَ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ مَنْ لَا يَعْرَفُ الْجَاهِلِيَ He said, a person will quickly lose the things that tie him to Islam, piece by piece, if he is raised in Islam, but he does not understand Jahiliya. He's raised in Islam, but has no awareness of a time and activities and actions and words that oppose the oneness of Allah, that oppose proper behavior. He must also understand that. A person who doesn't know the issues of al jahiliya and the polytheism contained within it is liable to assume that it is something good and therefore accept it. And we can see in today's world there are some celebrations, some festivals. Their origins are pagan. Their origins are polytheistic. Their origins, where they come from, is shirk. But some people who don't come from that culture where that particular thing may originate from doesn't know that and may indulge some of these paganistic things project themselves as being happy as being generous as being for children but in reality they are based upon a thing which Allah hates and that is shirk dear viewers in the religion of Islam 
Ignorance, a jahl, is a serious sickness, a serious illness that contains serious consequences. It is important that people who believe in the tawheed of Allah, the real monotheism of Islam, remain aware of its opposite, shirk, and they have to remain in fear of it. There's a chapter in the Kitab of Tawheed, it's called Khawf min al shirk, and Khawf min al shirk, fear of shirk. It isn't right for someone to say to himself or to anyone else, I know Tawheed, I'm not in danger of falling into polytheism or shirk. Statements like this are from a seduction and the tricks of shaitan. He whispers to people that you're Muslim and you already understand Tawheed. There's no need even to study it, to understand its issues, to be firm in it, and it's not necessary to understand its opposite. The Quran and the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu provide ample proof that shirk must be feared and a vigil must be maintained against it. You know, a person must always be on guard <coughs> against its effects, against it creeping into the tawheed of an individual. Allah says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرِكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Translated to mean, verily Allah does not forgive that partner should be set up with him in worship, but he forgives except that anything else to whom he pleases. And this is found in Surah Nisa, verse 48. And he says about the supplication of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu salam, وَإِذْ قَامَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدْ آمِنًا وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدُ الْأَسْنَامِ And remember when Ibrahim, Abraham said, O oh my Lord, O oh my Lord, make this city, Mecca, one of peace and security and keep me and my sons away from worshipping idols. And this is found in Surah Ibrahim, Surah 14, verse 35. And Allah says, In Nuhu, man yushrik billah, faqad harram Allahu alayhi al jannah, wa ma'wahu al-nar, wa man in dhalimina min ansar. Verily, whosoever sets up partners in worship with Allah, then Allah has forbidden paradise for him and the fire of hell will be his abode. And for the Vanimuna, polytheists and wrongdoers, there are no helpers. This is found in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the number fifth surah, the fifth surah, Ayah 72. So these verses highlight the extreme danger of shirk to human beings. We are told that Allah will not forgive if shirk is committed with him. And there is hope of forgiveness for all sins. We are told that Ibrahim and Khalil prayed to Allah that he, Allah, would protect him and his sons from falling into shirk. Even though Allah had taken Ibrahim as Khalil. Allah says, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا And Allah did take Ibrahim, Abraham, as a khalil. It's found in Surah An-Nisa, verse 125. What is a khalil? A khalil is the highest level of love. And even though Ibrahim had this position, and he was a guardian against shirk, and he broke the idols with his hand. And he suffered extreme harm because of his actions. And he was thrown into a fire. He still feared that he 
and his sons might fall into shirk. He feared this because he witnessed that many people had fallen into it. He said during his supplication, Labbi in Nahunna Allahna Kathira Minanas. O my Lord, they have indeed led astray many among mankind, meaning these idols, some trees, some rocks, some with statues of people, some statues of past leaders, that these idols have led many astray. And this is found in Surah Ibrahim, Surah number 14. Ayah number 36. Therefore, to understand how to build our faith properly, our faith in Allah properly, it is necessary to understand the means taken by Al Mustafa, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in protecting this ummah so that it would be strong, it would be distinguished and completely certain of the tawheed of Allah. He did this by warding off every word and action that could be used as an instrument to destroy Tawheed. As Allah says, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَعَنِتُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ الرَّئُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Verily, there has come to you a messenger, meaning Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from amongst yourselves, it grieves him that you should you should receive any injury or difficulty. He, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is anxious over you to be rightly guided, to repent to Allah, and to beg him to beg him to pardon and forgive your sins, in order that you may enter paradise and be saved from the punishment of the hellfire. For the believers, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is full of pity, and kind, merciful. This is found in Surah Toba, Surah number 9, verse 128. The Messenger of Allah, may Allah grant him peace, continuously prohibited shirk. He warned against his evil. And he repeated his warnings many times. He cautioned against shirk to individuals and he cautioned to, against shirk in groups so that he could protect the monotheism of the religion of Ibrahim from every statement or action that could contaminate Tawheed. The Messenger's numerous actions in this regard are narrated in his Sunnah. He presented evidence to remove any doubt about the proper religion to practice. And this religion, dear viewers, it is proven through its, through its dalil, through its evidence. Its evidence is from the Quran. Its evidence is from the Sunnah. From that time when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was teaching the people and purifying them and showing them the religion. And if anybody wants to know how the religion should be practiced, they should go back to the time when it was pure practice. It came from Allah Azza wa Jal to the Prophet and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam conveyed it to the people. Go back to that time and look at that religion before there was any entrance of any interference or any counter ideas or other cultures or philosophies or any of those things. If people want to know how the religion was in its pure state let him go back, go back to that time. Furthermore, the Prophet Muhammad cut the excuses of those who had doubts and clarified the path of success. The following examples are meant to show that Al Mustafa, meaning Muhammad, them what he did to preserve the Ummah from every path that could lead to shirk and the spread. Of falsehood. The first example we discussed in past episodes was al ruqa meaning al ruqya The conditions for using the ruqya are three. To make the ruqya 
permissible and correct. Because this is one of the things that people did in Jahiliya. They did what was known as Ruqya. They used words and they blew over the words to bring cure. So this had to be purified by Islam. So there are three things that make the Ruqya permissible and correct. Because there are two conditions. When a believer does an action, there are two conditions that make the action acceptable to Allah. One, that they are for Allah. And two, that they are verified and done correctly by the Sunnah. It should be believed, it should, it should not be believed that the Ruqya can bring about healing on its own without Allah's help. That's the first condition. To believe that the Ruqya can bring a remedy on its own without Allah's help or without Allah's intervention is a form of shirk. Rather, it must be believed that the Ruqya is a means that cannot bring benefit except with the help of Allah. The second condition, the contents of the Ruqya must be from the Islamic legislation. It must be from the Sharia. It cannot contain supplication to other than Allah or calls for help to demons because it's forbidden and would be rejected by Allah. Three, the words of the Ruqya must be in a language that can be clearly understood as opposed to a language used in magic spells and chants. And Imam Malik, may Allah have mercy on him, was asked, he was asked, is it permissible for a man to perform ruqya or to seek it from others? Imam Malik said, that's all right. As long as the words are, that are used are wholesome. More about this topic, inshallah, dear viewers. I'm Talib Abdullah for the Georgia Broadcasting Authority. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.